In this problem, it says that refrigerant 134A enters the condenser of a residential heat pump, and then it gives us our temperature and pressure and rate, and it leaves, and then it gives us the pressure and then the phase of our liquid. And it says, if the compressor consumes 1.2 kilowatt of power, so we want to determine A, the um, coefficient of performance of the heat pump. So that's really just how we're going to calculate kind of the efficiency of the heat pump. Because remember, for heat pumps, we use a coefficient of performance in place of an efficiency. And then we're also going to calculate the rate of the heat absorption from the outside air. So let's go ahead and draw a diagram of what's going on. I'm just going to call this the problem setup. So we know that we have a heat pump, so we can go ahead and draw. I'm just going to draw the different components of our heat pump in our cycle. So we have a condenser and we have a compressor and we have an evaporator and we have all right and then just putting like let's fill in some of the information that we have that we're given so First of all, it says that the refrigerant enters the condenser at 800 kilopascals. So that's right here. So we know that the pressure right here is 800 kilopascals. And I'm just going to kind of call that P1. And it says that it's at 35 degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature here is 35 degrees Celsius. And then it also gives us the mass flow rate. So the mass flow rate is 0 0.018 kilograms per second. And then it tells us that it leaves at 800 kilopascals as a saturated liquid. So that's over here. Now we're over here on the other side of the condenser because we're coming out of the condenser. And our pressure coming out, so P2, is 800 kilopascals. And since we have a saturated liquid, this means that our quality is zero. So let's just put that there as well. And then we're going to have, um, so we're removing, let's see what else does this say? So it says the compressor consumes 1.2 kilowatt of power. So we know that we're um, that our work in is 1.2 kilowatt, and this is also 1.2 kilojoules per second. And it wants to know. So this is um, let's see. So this is the, since this is a heat pump, this is the heat that we're putting into the room. So Q high and then Q low here. This is the heat that we're pulling from the outside air. And it's asking for the rate. So for part B, it wants to know the rate of heat absorption from the outside air. So this is one thing that we're looking for. And then the other thing that we're looking for is the coefficient of performance of the heat pump. So we're looking for the coefficient of performance of the heat pump. All right, so I think that's basically the information we're given and what we're looking for. So let's write some assumptions. Um, the first assumption that we want to make is that our heat pump operates steadily because then we can assume that our mass flow rate is the same throughout the heat pump. We don't want to be treating our 
because um, we, we really have four components to this heat pump, like we have the condenser, compressor, evaporator, and this expansion valve. We don't want to assume that any of those are operating unsteadily because that's going to make our analysis a lot harder. So we're going to assume that this heat pump's been running for a while, it's not in the startup phase, and that it's running steadily. So heat pump operates steadily. The other thing, and this is, um, so this is, we're going to need to do a, um, well, maybe we'll get to that assumption in a minute. So let's move on to the equations that we need. So equations. All right, so first of all, we know that we're calculating the coefficient of performance. So I'm just going to go ahead and write down the equation for the coefficient of performance for a heat pump. And that is equal to Q high over the work in. So just looking at this, we have, so we already have the network in, because that's given, um, or we have our work in. What we need is Q high. So Q high is not given. So that's here. And so what we're going to need to do in order to find Q, so in order to find the rate that heat's transferred out of the condenser, we're going to need to do a first law energy balance. And so this is really why, like back in like earlier, like earlier, we learned about all of these different components, like we learned about condensers, compressors, turbines, pumps, etc. So that's Really, the reason why we analyzed all of those things individually was because now we're looking at them as kind of a system. And so, so what we need to do is, I'm just going to, in order to get the Q high, I'm going to draw this bigger. I'm going to analyze the condenser. So we have the condenser and we have heat transferred out. And then we have liquid. So we have our working fluid flowing through the condenser. And we know, so we know that over here it's 800 kilopascals and 35 degrees Celsius. And over here at the outlet, it's still 800 kilopascals, and we know that the quality is zero because it's a saturated liquid. So this is what we know. And it looks like we have everything that we need in order to um, calculate QH. So what we need to do is we need to solve the first law energy balance. So I'm going to write down that equation. So Q dot minus W, and we're working with rates, because that's what we're, we were given, like we were given, well, we want to calculate, well, it's asking for Q low as a rate, so we want to calculate Q high as a rate. So this is equal to the mass flow rate, H2 minus H1 plus, and then we have our change in kinetic energy and our change in potential energy. So this comes back to the assumption that I kind of skipped over a second ago. So if we, if we just look at the condenser, um, we're going to make an assumption that the change in kinetic energy is approximately zero. And the main reason we're doing that is because even if so we have we do have fluid flowing in and out, but we have no idea what the velocities of the fluid are. So we can't even if we wanted to calculate a change in kinetic energy, we don't have the information to do that. So we're just going to assume that it's approximately zero. And then this condenser probably isn't 
really tall, like it's probably not meters tall, so we probably don't need to worry about the change in potential energy, so we're going to say that's approximately zero as well. So these two terms in our first law energy balance are zero. And then the other thing that we want to look at, we don't have any, like, so there's boundary work, but that's going to be included in our enthalpy terms. So we don't have any other work. Like we don't have, it doesn't tell us that there's like electrical work. There's, so really we can say that the work term is zero. So now we have Q, so, and this is Q high, is equal to M dot multiplied by the difference in enthalpy. And so the way we're going to solve this is we can simply look these up on the tables. So look up on tables. So we were given all of the information that we need. And I'll just highlight this. So we have all of the information that we need to look up the, these enthalpies on the tables. So then we can solve for Q high. And then the other thing that it wanted us to find was Q low. And so that's kind of, that's kind of separate. Because So once we have Q high, we can solve the equation for the coefficient of performance because we have Q high and we have the work in, because the work in was given. So the way that we're going to get Q low is from this. So if we do a energy balance on the entire cycle, then you get that the network in is equal to Q high minus Q low. And so then we can solve this for Q low. And if we do that, Q low is equal to Q high minus the work in. So now we have an equation for Q low as well. So now we can, uh, so the next thing we want to do before we solve these equations is we need to look up our data. So we need our data for um, the enthalpy at the inlet and outlet of the condenser. So I'm going to write down data. And so I'm going to specify that this is the inlet of the condenser. And I always like to write down the um I always like to write down the information that's given just so I, it's really clear what I'm looking up on the table. So in other words here, the pressure is 800 kilopascals and the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. And we don't necessarily know what the phase is, so we need to figure out what the phase is. And so what I did was I looked up the temperature of saturation at the pressure given, so 800 kilopascals. So at 800 kilopascals, um, Tsat is equal to 31.31 .31 degrees Celsius. Our temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, so T is greater than T sat. So this means that we have a superheated vapor. And that kind of makes sense that we would have a superheated vapor going into a condenser. So now we can look up our data on the superheated table. So we just need to look up the... Um, the data at 800, so the enthalpy at 800 kilopascals and 35 degrees Celsius. So if we do that, the enthalpy is 271.24 kilojoules per kilogram. Now let's find the data for H2. So this would be at the outlet of the condenser. I'm just going to kind of say that that's 2. So the, this gives us that the pressure is 800 kilopascals, so the pressure hasn't changed. And we have a saturated liquid. 
So really we know that the we know that this is the value at the um, saturation conditions on the um, saturation table. So H2 is equal to 95.48 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so now we have everything that we need to solve our equation. So I'm going to go down here to solve and let's just rewrite what we're solving. So we're looking for the coefficient of performance, which is equal to Q high over the work that we're inputting into this heat pump. And then we need Q high. So Q high is equal to M dot H2 minus H1. And then this is equal to, so the mass flow rate was given as 0 0.018 kilograms per second. And then H2 was 95.48 kilojoules per kilogram minus, and then we have 271.24 kilojoules per kilogram. So this works out to negative 3.16 kilojoules per second. And one thing I want to point out is that the sign is negative because the because this is Q out, like this is heat out. So like if we go back up here and look at this, the heat the heat is out. So that's why it's negative. So if the heat is out, then it's negative. So negative because heat is out. All right, so now we can calculate the coefficient of performance of the heat pump, and I should have specified that this is for the heat pump. Uh, so then this is equal to, let's see, Q high is, and these are absolute values in this equation. This is 3.16 kilojoules per second divided by the work in is given as 1.2 kilojoules per second. So this works out to 2.63. And then the last thing it wanted us to find was Q low. So Q low is equal to Q high minus the work in. So then this is going to be equal to 3.164, and remember when you're using these equations, um, we're, you're, it's the absolute values. The signs are already in the equation. So this is a little bit different from the first law equations that we had been using, but just keep that in mind. So um, 3.164 minus, and then the work is, this is kilojoules per second, minus 1.2 kilojoules per second. So this is equal to 1.96 kilojoules per second. So we have QL, coefficient of performance. So these are the two things that this problem was asking for.